Are you ready to transform the way you think about writing and your writing practice forever? Whether you're a brand new writer or a seasoned professional with multiple books under your belt, there are certain shifts you can make in your approach and your mindset that will change the way you think about writing and make your practice that much more productive and sustainable. It's so easy to get bogged down in the grind of trying to write, battling writer's block, battling self-doubt. So today I want to reveal five powerful lessons that will level up your writing practice and unlock new creative potential. A little bit about me, I'm a professional developmental book editor with a background in Big Five publishing. And if you're new to my channel, every week I either give tactical writing tips like today's video, or I talk about the publishing industry since that is my professional background. So if any of that interests you, please join our amazing community of more than 30,000 writers and storytellers. Before we get into the tips today, it would mean a lot to me if you hit that thumbs up button. It really does help out my channel and I'd really appreciate it. The first lesson I want you to internalize is that there is so much more to writing than just words on the page. Now, physically putting words down on a page is the most literal component of writing, but ultimately it's just that one component. And there is so much more that goes into the broader act of writing than just stringing words together to form sentences. And that's because you're not just writing, you're storytelling. And storytelling involves things like creating compelling characters, brainstorming an exciting new premise, learning about how other authors approach their craft, developing a voice, etc. So if you find that on one particular day, you just cannot put words down on the page, that doesn't mean that you can't contribute to your writing and storytelling craft overall. Sometimes the broader act of writing involves doing a character or a plot exercise, or reading another book in your genre, or by an author you really admire. Even watching a TV show or a movie could spur ideas for your own story. So I hope that broadening your definition of what writing actually is and entails alleviates any stress that might bubble up whenever you hit that dreaded writer's block. Just because you can't physically get words down on the page doesn't mean you're not developing as a writer. The next writing lesson I wanna talk about today is that your draft is a canvas. Think of your draft as a place of exploration, a canvas that you are continually returning to, adding more brush strokes to, refining further, adding detail. And it is not a finished product by any means. That canvas is likely going to contain some mistakes maybe a lot of mistakes, unintentional brushstrokes that you then have to revisit and correct, but that is completely okay. It's all part of the process of creating a beautiful finished product. Too often I see authors thinking of their manuscript as something set in stone, but really this is a place for messy experimentation. It's a place where things are constantly evolving. It should feel dynamic. So just as a visual artist refines their work through layers and layers of paint, think of your draft as a foundation for you to build upon. And viewing it in this way is going to allow you the room and space to develop the story and make it the strongest possible version of itself. Before we get into the next tips, I wanted to let you know about a free resource I created specially for my YouTube community. The link is in the description below to download my free story self-assessment worksheet. If you have a current work in progress, it's a fun, easy way to look at your story from a different perspective and identify what's working really well, as well as what could be improved on the next draft. If you're not really sure where to take the story from here, this is a great resource for you. Downloading that is going to opt you into my newsletter, Chapter Break, where I interview publishing industry insiders and successfully published authors. They're giving some amazing tips and I don't want you to miss out on all of that. If you wanna go straight to the newsletter, the link is also in the description. The next writing lesson that can transform your writing practice is to know that you aren't writing for everyone. The truth is that not everyone who reads your story is going to connect with it, whether that's a friend, a colleague, a family member, or a stranger, and that's completely okay. It's even expected. So detach from the idea as early as you can that your story is supposed to resonate with everyone under the sun. That is simply impossible. So instead, focus on writing for your audience, the people who will understand the intentions behind your work and feel moved by it. And if you don't know who that audience is yet, that's completely okay. It will come with time. But trust that staying authentic to your own voice and your own perspective as a writer 
you will find people who connect with your story. Just like people say not to change yourself to attract a romantic partner, don't change the way you write or your voice or the story you're telling to appeal to someone who isn't your ideal reader. You might want your story to impress a professor or a loved one or someone you really admire. But ultimately, if they're not your target audience, then that doesn't matter. Your story isn't going to be everyone's cup of tea, but it will be someone's favorite cup of tea. The next writing lesson I want to go over is that perfection is not the goal when you are drafting. Many writers are perfectionists, but this pursuit of perfection often creates a spiral of paralysis and self-doubt, which is absolutely counterproductive to the work that you want to be doing on your story. The truth is that no book, not even your favorite book, not even books at the top of the bestseller charts is perfect. But that doesn't make them not successful or not emotionally moving or not impactful. So rather than striving for perfection, aim to make your story as compelling and engaging as possible. See your work as something that can be continually refined and improved and be excited by that process rather than disturbed by the fact that it's not perfect right out the gate. I'm here to tell you, it's not going to be, and you may never feel like it's perfect. If you hit snags and obstacles along the way of your drafting process, embrace them as opportunities to become an even stronger writer and create an even stronger story. Perfection just simply isn't realistic, especially with an art form like writing. And by releasing yourself from this expectation that you have to create the perfect story or the perfect book, you're actually going to write something that is much more real and authentic and likely more compelling. The final writing lesson that will transform your practice is to know that you are good enough. Even the most accomplished authors deal with imposter syndrome, battling self-doubt, worried that their writing isn't good enough, fearful that no one is ever going to want to read their story, and questioning if they should just give up. The truth is that any writer facing these questions and anyone watching this video is good enough. Remember that there are no specific qualifications you have to meet in order to be a successful writer, you can be any age. You don't need any specific background or training. Becoming a good writer comes from just writing, practicing the act of writing over and over and over again. I know the literary world can feel exclusive, and that's one of the reasons why I created this channel to begin with, to help unlock that world to new writers. But the truth is that it really is a vast and inclusive place, and you can find your home in it. Anyone can find their home in it. Everyone has something to offer. So don't devalue what you bring to the table as an author. And the beauty of this particular craft is that even if you aren't where you want to be right now, you can continually become better and better. I've said it before and I'll say it again. As long as you write, you are a writer. So own that, internalize that, and embrace that. I hope this video helped you shift your mindset towards writing so you can build a more sustainable, creative, and productive writing practice. Let me know in the comments which one of these lessons most resonated with you, or if you've heard any other writing lessons, I would love to know what has inspired you. If you're looking for some more tips on how to build a sustainable writing practice, check out my video on destructive writer habits to overcome and tips on how to do so. Before you head out, if you liked today's video, please hit that subscribe button to join this amazing community. Hit that thumbs up button to help out my channel and don't forget your free story self-assessment worksheet and my newsletter link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and happy writing.